<laughs> Alright, we're out here at the uh, new cliffside course at Warriors Path. And I wanted to do a whole bag of Lone Star Disc. Lone Star has been investing a lot of money into the sport. They sign a lot of big players and they're sponsoring a lot of bigger tournaments now. And they're producing disc like crazy. Uh, I think they're coming out with basically like a mold a month at this point. So we're going to do a full bag of Lone Star. I also realize it's been a really long time since I've uploaded a video. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to start trying to make videos again. Just editing takes a long time. So you know, recently we added the uh, cliffside course out at Warriors, which added an additional nine holes and created 36 holes in total, two 18s. Um, it allows for Warriors Path to hold uh, bigger tournaments now and more people. Um, so that's kind of part of this video is I wanted to give you a, a little bit of a look at the full course on some of the newer holes I'll take a minute and kind of talk about the holes some of the older holes. I'll just play through But let's do a quick in the bag real quick this Lone Star stuff that I'm using It's also really weird coming out here to play and not using my normal bag <clears throat> uh, I've got a Jackrabbit in V2 which is their beaded over stable putter um, a V to penny putter which is a little bit straighter more of a luna feel a v2 copperhead which is their overstable thumb track disc um, a v1 blue bonnet which is kind of like a p2 or an aviar it's that kind of deeper b-less putter a v1 armadillo which is similar to like a berg uh, i have thrown i've thrown a couple of these discs before not many of them so most of these are blind reactions the only disc I've thrown are the Warbird, the Mad Cat, the Blue Bonnet, or yeah, the Blue Bonnet, and the Texas Ranger and the Armadillo. Um, <clears throat> Texas Ranger in Bravo plastic. A MIDI, the MIDI in Glow. Um, the BB6, and it's in Alpha plastic. Oh, and I've thrown a harpoon, a Bravo harpoon, um, and a Glow Walker, which is like their Justice, a Chupacabra in Alpha, a Lariat in Bravo, uh, Alpha in, or a Bayonet in Alpha Plastic, Bravo Mad Cat. I have their newer mold, the Nimitz in Alpha Plastic, a Alpha Tumbleweed, Alpha Mockingbird. Bravo Dos X and a Bravo Guadalupe. I am missing a couple of their molds. Like I know I'm missing the Bull Snake, a Warbird, a Bayonet, or not a Bayonet, a uh, Bowie, and a Tombstone. I don't have those in here. Um, oh, I've thrown a Tombstone as well. It's stupid overstable, ridiculously overstable. I think it's part of the reason why. I think it's part of the reason why I didn't bring it is because it's so overstable. It's kind of no point in showing it. <clears throat> but I also plan to do some. Normal disc review field videos with these so you can get a, get a better flight of how each disc uh, flies and I'll get some of the sidearm really far too. also have a Super Dillo, which is jive freaking enormous compared to a normal disc. Here's a normal disc. I mean it eats it. I can literally put it inside of it. It's crazy. The hole one is an uphill par four, basically plays up the road, kind of miss past this tree right here on the right, curve over a little bit, but don't turn over too much, and then have either a turnover or a sidearm up to the basket. Um, I normally throw mid on this hole anyway, so I'm going to go with the uh, Texas Ranger, and I am also going to keep score, and let's see what I shoot. Oh no. Get a different job. All right, new rule. 
We're playing my best shot. And score doesn't actually matter. Perfect, in the middle. Help, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, I'm stuck in my strap. Help. So the thing with always, the thing with always trying new discs from like a brand new manufacturer is you don't know how their flight numbers are gonna rank up to uh, other companies because flight numbers are never accurate across the board. They're kind of accurate with inside, inside of a manufacturer. Um, so you know, when something says negative one one, like the Texas Ranger, pretty much has the same flight numbers as a Buzz. It doesn't fly anything like a Buzz at all. I think it's more stable. And the basket is right there. So let's throw some out here to the left and let it dive into the right. All right, we're gonna go Chupacabra sidearm. Oh, that's very overstable. Okay, it's more overstable than like, uh, I think it's more stable than like a stock Pioneer or Felon. Kind of beefy. Honestly, like really beefy. All right, we've got, I'm gonna pull with the Blue Bonnet, the Jackrabbit, and the Penny Putter. Uh, uh, blue Bonnet first. All right, now we're gonna try the Jackrabbit. All right, we're even through one. Uh, hold two, the other park four plays down the road. It goes past that intersection, turns down and right into a pretty cool green. So here is the DOS X. This is one I got a lot of hope in. All right, that's where the DOS X landed, which is totally my first shot, and the basket is down there. So it's kind of weird to me because their flight numbers are a little weird. The DOS X was more stable than I thought it was going to be. The Guadalupe was flippier than I thought it was going to be based off of the numbers. Uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Right, let's let's go Copperhead back in turnover. Supposed to be over stable, so. It really wasn't super overstable, but it gives us a putt of some kind. And I'm gonna putt with the jackrabbit first this time. All right, now we'll go penny putter. That one just comes out of my hand weird. There's something about it. And blue bonnet. Apparently Chandler Kramer putts with the copper head. He's weird. Uh, we're gonna go Mockingbird on hole three. Uh, it's kind of supposed to be like their leopard disc. Part and lariat. I want. I want to like this disc. Oh, I like it now. It's a putt. It's sweet. It's really nice. All right, we're on hole four. Uh, this is one of the new holes. Pretty short, easy, I think it's, yeah, 180 feet. 
But the cool thing about this hole is not only that it's like in this little valley, here's behind the Z-pad. This is why it's called Cliffside. I feel like we should have like a commercial with some dude with a deep voice like narrating. Welcome to Cliffside at Warrior's Path. You know what I mean? All right, being only 180 feet, uh, I'm gonna go copperhead and I'm gonna try and flex it over to the basket. Pull across it, let it uh, dive back to the left. Okay. Um, then we're gonna throw the armadillo too, just for fun. That copperhead worries me a little bit. I don't feel like it's as overstable as it's uh, supposed to be. No, well, other than I yanked it, it's good. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna take advantage of this hole being short. And I'm gonna throw a couple another disc at it. We're gonna go Walker, which is their Justice, BB6, Understable Mid, and Harpoon, which is point and shoot. We'll do the Harpoon. I thought I used it, but I didn't. Harpoon's not. All right, now we're gonna go BB6. Oh my gosh, that's flippy, go in. And the walker, and I think we'll check it sidearm. We'll do the walker sidearm. I was gonna go in too. Never mind. Oh, no, we, we, we took a par. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go mad cat, and uh, we ain't doing a layup. We're going aggressive. And why don't you say and one more time? I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea where that is. I think I maybe just lost it. Chupacabra flex. El Chupacabra. That's over stable. That's it. Oh, that was beautiful right there. It's an easy three. Okay, yeah, I gotta figure this out, this copperhead. Let's throw the copperhead. I'm gonna see if it's actually over second. Let's see it is not. It is not that over cycle, if I'm being honest. So right now, the one I'm most weary about is the copperhead it's really not over stable it's kind of straight stable sort of i feel like if i hit it really hard on a hyzer it's going to flip up it's really not what you want on an overstable approach desk uh the bb6 is also stupid flippy like ridiculously flippy um otherwise i'm liking all this stuff i'm trying so far that cat was actually in a good spot and landed about right here uphill kind of easy three but we're gonna go play from the uh cheaper copper uh we're gonna go copperhead and then we'll put the armadillo right behind Yeah, that worked out. And actually, we'll do the Super Dillo too. See, okay, here's a comparison real quick for you. The Armadillo, the Super Dillo. Same line. All right, Super Dillo. I think I'm in love with the Super Dillo. You know, current question to disc golf is Polecat or Glitch. I think I'm gonna have to go Super Dillo. Super Dillo. They just helped straight.
I'm Chandler Kramer with a backhand. All right, I know that. I know that it sounds like I'm hating on a copperhead. I'm not. It just doesn't fly like how I think it maybe should. It's a little bit. It's straighter. It's actually. It's not a bad flying disc. I birdied the last hole with it, but it by no means flew how I was hoping it would or how I threw it to fly. It just kind of got lucky and worked out. So if you like a thumb track disc that has a little bit of flip up and a little bit more turn to it than normal, Copperhead's going to be one of your favorite discs. All right, we're going to go BB6 Hyzer flip backhand. Okay, I threw it off in the middle of the woods, but if I had thrown it like two feet to the right, I think it'd been a putt pretty easily. My biggest issue with filming right now is I'm so ginormous to get me in frame is a little tricky. Copperhead, armadillo, harpoon, and super dillo. Go armadillo first. Uh, copperhead. Harpoon. Okay, harpoon acted over stable. I was expecting the harpoon to flip up a little bit more than it did. And super dillo. Let's see, that flipped up quite a bit. Four different discs. Uh, we'll go Mad Cat, DOS X, which I'm also actually really liking, the Bayonet, and the Nimitz. Go Mad Cat first. We're gonna come back out in the middle, click something on the right side. So, the more I throw the Mad Cat, the more it reminds me of kind of like some of the straight runs of Jeremy Culling's Royal Star Thunderbirds. It's actually a really, really good disc. Mad Cat, I don't know, I, I like it a lot. All right, here's the DOS X. <clears throat> I'm gonna lie, I like a DOS X too. It's got a little bit of flip up to it and a lot of push and then a little bit of fade at the end. Uh, go Nimitz, same flight numbers as like a Wraith. Um, honestly don't know that it's gonna fly like that, but we'll see. It's flippy. How did I do that? Okay, if I can air that shot out, that Nimitz actually is probably really good for like a distant shot or just a smooth, just a uh, smooth, faster shot. And we'll go Bayonetta for the last one. Bayonetta, Bayonetta. Right. Oh, okay, that's way more stable than I thought it was gonna be. All right, not gonna lie. The Bayonet was more stable than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I'm going to throw a couple of shots from the short tee. I'm going to throw these going to the short pin. Texas Ranger, the Midi, and the Chupacabra. We'll go Texas Ranger first. Okay, it held over a little bit more to the right than I thought it would. Oh, but it's coming back. Um, now we'll go Midi. This is supposed to be overstable. Okay. It's reasonably stable. Jupiter. Give it some flex. Gosh, that thing's so unstable. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, I know originally we were playing to the short pin on where this Mad Cat landed. I decided that it was a good idea to throw to the long pin so I can highlight kind of some of all these discs fly on a shorter approach, like a normal approach top shot from this distance. Right, uh, this is the midi.
how you yanked it. But it's overstable, so it's okay. So this is actually a distance that I could throw my Toro or even my Saki Slammer at. Um, sidearm. I would normally throw this approach shot backhand, but I'm going to throw the Copperhead sidearm and see if it will not roll over. So it works on just like a straight up Spockheiser basically. All right, we're gonna go Armadillo backhand. Okay, so it has the slightest bit of flip up to it that like a bird doesn't have, or a rhino. Bird and rhino don't have that flip up that the Armadillo has, which I kinda, kinda okay with, I kinda like it. All right, well, we're gonna go Harpoon sidearm. That's really good, I like car things. BB6 backhand. Oh, it's super flippy. Hi, Hi mom. All right, now we're gonna go penny putter. Okay, the penny is flippy. Uh, now we're gonna go jackrabbit. Okay, Jackrabbit has a little bit of fade to it. And now the blue bonnet. Wow, I like that blue bonnet a lot. I think that's my favorite putter for them by far. Alright, <clears throat> now we're on uh, hole nine. I'm uh, going we'll throw both the penny putter and the BB6. We'll go penny putter first. And now for the BB6, which is super understood. And I kind of love it. Okay, I didn't throw that one very well. No. Super Dillo. The Super Dillo. Oh, it's really flippy. We just rolled. All right, we're gonna play with the blue bonnet and then the super dillo. All right, everybody, that's it for the front nine at the close side course using only Lone Star Disc. <coughs> um, I'm gonna put the back nine in a separate video. You can go over there and watch it. Back nine is going to be a scored nine. Now that I've thrown these discs around a little bit, I'm gonna be doing one and done, no retakes, all uh, one shot. Here comes Chris Dickerson.